list. Uh, okay, so this pack is pretty good, actually. This is probably one of the better pack one picks ones I've seen in this uh, cube so far. Um, I think Wizard's Lightning is just fine, but I don't really want to necessarily be like a Wizard Burn deck. I think I'm actually going to take... Oh, man. It's, this pick is between Jade Light Ranger and Ridge Scale Tusker for me. I think Jade Light Ranger is the better of the two cards just because the, the, the double explore is very powerful. Um, but both play well in a, in a counters deck. Um, oh, damn. I was so excited to get back into the queue that I forgot to mention the lore. Okay. Um, I promise, promise, promise. Also, like, literally, please bother me about it. Um, but I will absolutely lore before, um, before, like, going into game one or match one of this league. I promise. Um... Okay, so we picked a Counters Matters card here, but it's also like a, gra a graveyardy card. So we could go Status Statue, like that's just generally a very good card. Um, we could also go Shambler if I wanted to just kind of like Tunnel Vision on this a little bit. Um, and just really try to force the Counters deck, which I think is a good deck, honestly. Actually, I'm going to take the Shambler. It's a good little one drop. You're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um... <laughs> I can't, I, I can't even get mad at you because that's just like a good quality pun. Uh, oh, here we're definitely going to take the Endotha Triome. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, Endotha Triome. It's really like the only card that we would even like. Like, let's see what's in this. Like, what's in this pack otherwise? It's just like kind of a bunch of stuff. It's not even that exciting. And Triome being uh, these colors, like these are actually the colors that synergize well with counters in this, uh, in this uh, archetype. So that's actually just a great land for us. Yeah, Pete, that's true. I mean, they did make Mythic Lands, though, right? Like, I mean, technically, they're not Mythic Lands exclusively, but the, the, the cycle of modal dual phase cards, right, from Zendikar, those are literally Mythics. Now, technically, there's spells on the front, lands on the back, which is, like, maybe a, a, a loophole on that statement, but they're still effectively Mythic Lands. Um, They're very good Mythic Lands, though. I actually am a big fan of that land cycle. I was a little low on them initially, I think the blue one is still pretty mopey, but I think all four of the other ones are actually quite good. Um, okay, what do we have here? This is a good pack. Um, it's not really a good pack for what we're trying to do, unfortunately. Like, I'm wondering if blue is, or if uh, green isn't getting cut a little bit, which would be awkward. Um, maybe I should be looking at moving into something else right now, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so Handag Executioner, Hang Executioner is actually just a fine card, quite frankly. Um, good little, like, two-for-one that has a removal spell stapled onto it. What does this card do? This is definitely not a card I care about. I'm going to take it, just because I kind of want to try to bully people out of being in my colors, if I can. Um... Because we have a very good start to a counters deck, and I don't want to give up on that if I don't have to. We will see. We will see. But yeah, Legendary is actually not tied to Rarity anymore. Uh, for a long, long time, that was the case, uh, Project, uh, to answer your question from a little earlier. Um, but they've now actually just gone right into, like, making Uncommons uh, be potentially Legendary, uh, as we've seen in the la in several of the last few sets, including Kaldheim. Um, uh, from the spoilers. And I think that that's fine, because honestly, Legendary is more about the effect on the card than how powerful the card is. Um, oh, this is funny. Release the dogs. Uh, I'm actually going to take Mecha Godzilla here. I think I could. Oh, also, I hate that this is Mecha Godzilla. I need to revert this to actually Crystalline Giant. I I do not like the Godzilla cards personally. That's just a thing, and I'm kind of annoyed that the client is defaulting to making that the thing I have. Um, it actually didn't start in Dominaria at Anchor Point. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it started in Kamigawa, but then they didn't revisit it for a really long time afterwards. Um, that that was my uh, um actually moment uh for today. Hopefully there won't be too many more. I kind of feel gross having done that, but I felt it was important. Um, 
Yikes, dude. Yeah, draft not exactly going the way I wanted it to. Kind of doesn't look like what I'm trying to do is open, which is a little annoying. I could be wrong, but I think, like, a lot of the legendary was. But if I, is, are Brothers Yamazaki not uncommons? I could be wrong about that. I definitely thought that there were uncommon legends, but I'm not, I guess, dead certain about it. No, 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 it's fine. I mean, again, like, Kamigawa was, like, a long time ago. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if half the people in my chat weren't playing Magic at when Kamigawa came out. Um, do I want this, just because it does have a plus one, plus one counter theme to it? Feels like a bad reason, but also whatever. I kind of just really want to force this, even though it kind of seems like I'm forcing an archetype that is not open right now. Come at me. Um... God, what do I do if I'm switching gears? What should I be doing if I'm switching gears? Uh, I don't like the way this draft is going. We started off really... Ooh, actually, never mind. This is actually perfect for a 1-1 counter stack. Um, this card is very, very, very good. So maybe green was just... No oh, man. Oh, yeah. And the Tusker wheel. Okay, so it's not that I was getting cut off. It's just that apparently there just wasn't a lot of green getting opened in this pack. Because, yeah... Getting the, an 8th pick at Rowan Games and then wheeling the Ridge Scale Tusker, which was like my other pack one pick one consideration, tells me that we're in. We just got a little bit unlucky on the um, on the way that the, the other packs broke down. I will take Status Statue here. I can actually splash Statue just off of having an Endatha Triome in my deck, which is kind of sweet. Um, I mean, Sacred Vampire technically has a 1-1 counter theme going. It could be green-black 1-1 counters, splashing white. Or something. Uh, so expeditions are mythic, but they're not really mythic in the way that we understand it. They're basically templated as mythic, but like mythic really only applies to like pack rarity, and like like ex expeditions are like not really part of like they're not the mythic you would open in your pack. They're like a bonus supplementary card. So they're labeled as mythic because I think that just makes them like look cooler on a on a uh, liquid when they print them. But they're not mythics in terms of like this will be the rare or mythic in your rare or mythic slot in the pack when you open it. Um, so although they are printed as a mythic, they're not really mythics for the purposes of drafting. Because like this is sort of a controversial thing, obviously. Ooh. Um, oh wow, this is a really good pack. This is a really nice pack. Uh, for us. There's a lot of good cards for the plus one plus one deck here. There's Pelt Collector, there's Knight of Autumn, and then there's like the Great Henge. Jeez, there's also Field of the Dead, On Sarah's Wings. This pack is stacked. This would have been a nice pack one pick one and an interesting one. I think I would have I think I'm just gonna windmill slam the Great Henge. Because that card is actually just ludicrously unbeatable. Uh if they don't have like a direct answer to it. Um like you will win every game where you get to untap with the Great Henge. I'm pretty confident in that. I'm very much hoping to wield the Knight of Autumn, although I would also not mind wielding the Pelt Collector. But, like, the Henge is actually just bananas. Oh, no, no, the Henge is bananas. Henge is bananas. Like, it's never not the Henge there. Um, I just felt obligated to at least acknowledge the other cards in that pack. Okay, this is actually another really nice pack for us. Does Animation Module do what I want it to do? It kind of does. Module looks really sick in this deck. So there's Module, there's Kavu... Wilt, like all of the green and white cards, except for like maybe Gus Walker. Like Walker's a fine card, but I don't want it for this deck. But like all of the other green and white cards are all pretty good. I actually think I'm going to take the animation module. I kind of want to mess around with that a little bit. And it is a really, really good synergy piece. Um, that can lead to like a lot of just random free one ones. Um, ooh, do I splash a Grackma? Yeah, hey, I'm, I, yeah, I'm down for all of my old school, uh, all school friends. Kami Guy was actually when I quit Magic for the first time. I started playing Magic in Odyssey block. Um, literally just playing on the school bus with a couple of my close friends. And then I played pretty very, like, very casually, like, super kitchen table-y up until, a, like, pretty much Kamigawa era. Like, I think Ravnica City of Guilds was officially out when I, uh, when I stopped playing, but I didn't really buy any of those cards. And then I came back during... Uh, for M10, and I've never left since because I realized it's just the greatest game in the world, and why the hell would you ever leave?
Um, I'm actually going to try to splash this Grackma. I think Grackma is pretty hype. Um, oh, damn. Song of Fraley's. You better believe that's what we're taking here. A lot of good cards, but the song is messed up. Um, the turn that where it goes, like, the, the Chapter 3 turn is just disgusting. It's really stupid, too, because Mirrodin and Kamigawa is what turned me off of Magic. I did like how parasitic those sets felt. Um... Yeah, no, Project is super new, and it's been uh, it's been kind of fun uh, watching them sort of explore the game and whatnot. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, it definitely, uh, like, again, given the fact that, like, I am, like, a teacher by trade, it, like, very much scratches an itch for me to, like, sort of get to sort of impart my knowledge on people. I can't help but be a little bit uh, selfishly uh, tickled uh, whenever I get the opportunity to do that. Um... So the Desert Champion does get plus one, plus one counters, but only off of enchantments, of which I only have one at the moment, so I don't think that's what we're going to be doing. That being said, this pack is also just kind of god-awful. Um, I don't think we have a good enough tokens theme, although, like, Animation Module and, like, Divine Visitation kind of sounds like a thing. That's like, kind of hot. I'm wondering... I'm going to take this... I could also take the Bestiary, I suppose... Yeah, Ram is actually a very... You know what? No, Ram is a great sideboard card. That's actually just a totally fine pick. I, I like that. I like that suggestion. Um, I am a-okay with that. Uh, God damn it. Um, I don't think this card is what I want to be doing. Rogren Triumph doesn't do anything for me. This definitely doesn't do anything for me. Ugh. So this pack is actually just bad. I guess I'll take the Titan off then. But yeah, I basically missed Ravnica... Uh, I was I missed Ravnica, Lorwyn block, and Shard, like both Lorwyn blocks, and then Shards block, as a result of not being happy with uh Meriden and Kamigawa, and that was a sad time because those blocks are retrospectively very freaking cool. Momentous Fall is in this cube. Interesting. I guess yeah, that's another Jumpstart one. I sometimes just like I was like, wait, that was in Jumpstart too. Um. Now I'm just curious to know if Project is serious or just uh, taking the piss. Also, that pick, yeah. I didn't make a pick there, but also that pack was just literally irrelevant to our deck, so whatever. Um, Trusty Retriever buys back an artifact or enchantment. We actually have quite a few things that Trusty Retriever can pick up, I just realized. Because it can pick up a Destroyed Henge, Iroan Games once it's depleted... Uh, Mindstone if I crack it. Ooh, ooh, god, this is a tough pick. So do I take the Voracious Hydra, or do I just take the Fixing in the form of Scattered Groves? Hydra is really good, but Fixing is also really good. Oh, and I'm not going to see any of these cards back, because this is just eight cards, so I'm never seeing any of these cards again. Damn it. Uh, I'm going to be a good boy and take the Fixing. Kind of sucks to pass that, though. Oh, wow, we wield... Literally none of the green cards in this pack. That's a bad sign for me, I feel. How do we always wind up in an archetype that's seemingly open, but then we get cut out of it by the time the pack's wheel? Like, this pack is just nothing. This pack is just trash, unfortunately. I guess I'll take it on Sarah's Wings. Hell, maybe I just played. It. It's a good card. Wings is very good. Wings is very good. I think I just take the Kabu here over the Wilt. Wilt is a good card. But Kabu is a good 2-drop and a very good 5-drop, and it actually has synergy with our counter stuff. So I think I'm just taking Kabu here. Um, Sure, I'll take Wolf Willow. It's just like a piece of ramp. Ooh, nice. Okay. See, like, then we wield all the green cards from this pack, so now I'm just confused. The mill deck, I'm pretty sure, is actually just busted in this format. If you get the, the mill enchantments, Psychic Corrosion, um, and whatever else, it's, like, pretty unreal. Uh, let's take the uh, Malthus there. Um, but yeah, I'm quite convinced that the mill deck is busted, if you get the pieces for it. Alright, so there is a Multani in this pack. Might actually just be the pick. The only other card is like this, but it's not that good. We don't have enough, we don't have a lot of top end, and Multani is a good finisher. Like, there's no doubt about that. This is, yeah, this, this was one of those key mill cards, as a side note. Um, there's just nothing else for us. Like, I don't care about Sentinel's Eyes. I don't care about Ronom Unicorn. Um, so we're just going to take the Multani as sort of just generic value, I think. Oh. 
How's it going, Big Bounce? Also, thank you for the compliment. I'll take it. I am quite proud of my beard, I will say. Um, I grew it myself. Her, 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 her. Uh, okay, we're just going to take another piece of fixing over really not much. Like, Sifter Worm is great, but we did just literally take a random fatty. So I don't think I need to take another random fatty over fixing here. But yeah, welcome uh, welcome to the stream, uh, Big Bounce. The name is vaguely familiar to me. Ooh, the Riley Knight special? You gotta love that. Uh, might even wield the cartouche, but we're definitely taking Luminar. That's like just kind of everything this deck wants to be doing. Um... Ooh, rare and mythic rare in your rewards? Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah, the mill deck from yesterday project was... Uh, well, yeah, it, it, it sure was a, a thing that we had to deal with. Okay, Path of Discovery. Giving all of my creatures Explorer, like, Loki seems good, but I don't know if this is, like, too clunky of a combo card. Like, I could definitely just take Emissary of Sunrise. What does my curve look like right now? It's actually, like, pretty decent. Actually, I... I yeah, stat, status is a 4-drop, because I'm mostly going to try to be casting it as Statue, if at all possible. Um... What do we think? Can I get away with playing, like, a Do-Nothing Enabler card? Feels a little greedy. Yeah, sure, whatever. Let, let's do let's do the fun thing. I don't know if it's the good thing, but it definitely is the fun thing. So we'll try. We'll try. Ooh, Bowser's Acolyte and Bowser's Lieutenant in the same pack. That's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. I think the Lieutenant is better, right? It's a bigger body, and it cares about other things having 1-1 one -one counters on them. There's a decent chance I might wheel the Acolyte, too. So I think I'm going to take the Lieutenant here. Um, I think I'm going to take Fine Finality here. This is another one of those cards that I could pretty much guarantee just splash off of the random Triome, I think. And the Fine side is castable regardless and just good. Ovia Pashiri is decent, but not incredible. This isn't a tokens deck. This is a counters deck, and she doesn't do counters things. So I think I'm going to take the Status Statue, or the Fine Finality, rather, here, and be pretty happy about that. Um... This pack's a bust. Like, I could take Raise the Alarm. Maybe Dawn Treader Elk is fine, but it's, like, not great. I guess I'll take the Elk. It's, like, fine. Yeah, you might be right about that, Pete. I don't know. Maybe I'm undervaluing Ovia. It's definitely possible that I did. I feel like... Uh, wait, what, what did I pick her over again? Or what did I pick over it? I think... I, I, I just... Oh, it was the Fine Finality. I just think Fine Finality is super powerful. But again, I'm entirely prepared to be wrong about that. Okay, this is... Oh, yeah, this is the sort of, like, pseudo-exalted card. That doesn't really do much in my deck. Central sort of Valoron is not what I want to be doing. Am I obligated to pick this card? Am I obligated to pick this card? Probably not. I'm probably just going to take Danatha. I might not play Danatha, but she's just a good card. Am I single? No, I am certainly not single. I am... Uh, Jeez, how... I am seven years into a uh, very committed monogamous relationship. Or just shy of seven years, anyway. Seven years in April, I think. The Shadow Cat is like a weird, like, sacrifice deck payoff, but it's kind of like a bad payoff. Yeah, no, Bounce, you're, uh, you're out of luck, unfortunately. I'm uh, very happily committed. Uh, ba 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 ba. What do I want here? I don't... Maybe the ramp piece? I don't know. I don't think it matters. Also, for anyone wondering... <laughs> for anyone wondering, the... The the big bounce... Uh, oh, Alex, you, you, you flattered me. For anyone wondering, the big bounce is, in fact, my partner. Um, sorry to... Uh, sorry to... To give up the... Uh, the, the trick there. Uh, this card's trash... Probably just gonna take card two. So that card's actually pretty good. Um, this puts a one one counter, but only on a knight. And I don't think I have any of those. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Ad Anchor was about to moderate your ass. That was so funny. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Honestly, okay. Do you know, do you, if it makes you feel any better, Hannah, if it makes you feel any better, I actually, like, literally forgot what Val's username was for a second. Um, and also thought that it was just a random trying to be thirsty. <laughs> And then I was like, wait, hang on. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. It's totally fine, Val. That's really funny, honestly. I like, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. That's great. That's really freaking funny, honestly. <laughs> okay, uh, we are four cards over on this deck. Wow, that is really aggressive on the swamp suggestions there, uh, MTGA. I don't think we need to go quite that deep. Okay, definitely don't need this Ronom Unicorn. I can bring it in if it winds up actually being relevant. Um, definitely don't need this Venerable Knight. Uh, like Haven is fine. It's like any like any like two drop ramp probably can't be that bad. Um, do I want the Danatha? She doesn't. No, Danatha's bad in this deck. She doesn't do anything. Um, what else? I still think splashing the Grackmaw is totally fine. Aw, oh, shucks, Project. Too kind, too kind. Alright, one card to cut. What will it be? Wait, this is a two drop, probably. Actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna consider this a six. I'm gonna consider this a six drop. I'm I'm optimistic that I will get to cast finality. Or er, yeah, finality for its actual cost. Some amount of the time. Um, I think I am going to play a single swamp between the Grackmaw and the Find Finality and the Status Statue. And the fact that I have a Dawn Trader out that can actually go find the swamp. I think that's acceptable. My color commitments are pretty generous. <laughs> yeah, at Anchor. I'm, I'm, I'm desperate for mods. The thirst is way too real in my chat. Um... God, this is how, like, unironically, though, this is how females, like, female, whip, female feels weird. I feel like female is a thing that incels say. This is how women who stream, if this is what they have to deal with, like, unironically and on the regular, like, Jesus Christ. Fucking dudes, get your shit together. Hey, thanks for the follow, Val. I mean, honestly, I have no sympathy for Pokey. Pokey is a transphobe and she can burn in hell as far as I'm concerned. Um, but like, obviously, like, I mean, at the same time, yeah, I obviously don't want to see women getting shat on either, but like, yeah, the transphobia kind of makes me lose a lot of sympathy. Um, but yeah, Gen gentlemen, yeah, no, females is weird. I don't, I don't, I said that and then immediately I was like, ugh, that felt gross. So I'm not going to say that again. I'm just going to say women because that's what you are. Um, all right. What am I cutting from this? I'm still not sure what the last cut is supposed to be. Yeah, I know it's not a super, super well-known thing, but like once you know, it's like pretty hard to deny it. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty unfortunate. You know, the, the major example that I heard is that in her Discord, she basically, uh, like she has a, uh, uh, like a, like, I don't know if it's girls or women or something. She has a role specifically for women in the, her Discord, but she refuses to grant that to trans women, which is like just completely fucked up, obviously. Um, so like, that's really not cool. Oh yeah, no, just, just TERFs in general. Yeah. See, the problem is I don't like the term TERFs because feminism is still in that term. And I feel like if you're a TERF, you're not a feminist. So like, I feel like TERF is just a bad term. Um, and it actually like undermines actual feminists. Um, yeah. All right. But seriously, what is the last cut from this deck? Is it just Cartouche? Cartouche is like fine, but not incredible. It's pretty good in my deck though. It's just a good kill spell. And I don't have a lot of those. I can't help but feel that it's probably just supposed to be Path of Discovery. It just feels like taking the turn off to just cast this is like really kind of a huge setback. 
I'm going to cut the path of discovery. I'm not convinced that that's the correct cut, but that's where I'm going to start. All right, we're definitely uh, going to lose... I'm going to lose all the basics. Let's let's get the good John Avon in here. Um, so, white, black, green. So what's my color distribution? I'm definitely going to be heavy on the green. Uh, so 17 lands. I think I'm going to go like... So I've got one, two, three green sources already, as well as one, two, three white sources, and then one black source. So the easy one is I'm putting a singleton swamp in here for sure. Yeah, uh, uh, at anchor, that's 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 certainly part of the issue I have with it as well. I mean, I'm down for turd just as an acronym. I don't even care what it stands for. I just like that because that actually like just is also an amusingly derogatory term in and of itself. So it definitely makes it sound less legitimate. Yeah, no problem at anchor. Like I said, I mean. I am unfortunately the product of being a cis white male raised in a society that tends to not come down on us very hard for that kind of shit. So a lot of that stuff is just like sort of back cataloged in my brain. But yeah, you have my solemn promise that I will always do my best to like try to fix that shit. Because yeah, it's it's definitely not cool. And like, I don't want to be making people feel excluded, um, whether it be here on my discord in the channel or just in real life. Um. Okay, so... Mostly green. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I actually just like don't have a lot of white cards in my deck. So I probably don't need that many actual planes now that I think about it. I have like almost as many black cards as I do white cards. That's kind of funny. Um, and they're all single white too, which is kind of cool. So what are we gonna do then? I feel like eight white sources is probably good enough, so we're gonna go like let's go five planes. And then how many forests does that mean I need? Yeah, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. But that's different. That's like making Nazis feel unwelcome. Like, again, like, let's, like, you know, like, I'm going to grant, I'm going to grant, I'm going to be civil to the people that deserve it and not to the people that don't. Um, But enough about that. I want to get back to some magic. Uh, okay, so this is 12 green, 8 white. I can probably go one more white source, go like 11, 9, that I'm just like never not going to draw my white sources, I don't think. Um, And then the singleton black is fine because I only have one actual black card. The rest of my black cards are castable off of other things. And I don't really want to draw multiple black sources. Yeah, true. Exactly, right? Um, like the 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 duels the, the double standard is is pretty uh, egregious to say the least. Um okay, I'm pretty happy with how this deck turned out. Let's uh yeah, let's put it through its paces. See what happens. All right, play first. Um, no, I forgot to fix the Godzilla. It's so bad. Mulligan, just because that way I don't have Godzilla. No, this hand is actually great. I'm definitely never mulliganing this. Um, yeah, we actually like we actually already have our black source. Oh yeah, I have two black sources in the deck because of the Triumph. So yeah, that 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 repetition was definitely correct. Uh, I am just gonna play the Untamed Cabo as a two drop here. There's really no need not, uh, to do anything else. Just puts the pressure on board. And it's still a very fine two drop, so no reason not to. Um, no, they're gonna definitely take my. Uh, actually, they, I was gonna say they're actually probably gonna take my Godzilla now that I think about it. I don't know. Maybe that's just doing me a favor. Who knows? Uh, so they know they have the status. I really don't want to put out the Song of Free at least with just a single creature. Like I am pretty sad that they have the agonizing there. Because I would have very much preferred to get to, uh... Are they just going to kill this? I don't know, Midnight Clock. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, that, that, that's probably a, a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid, uh, heuristic for that. Ooh, Pangolino. That's pretty good. Um... Yeah, let's just attack. Because now I can keep status statue up. I'm like 
almost tempted to try to statue my opponent's Midnight Clock, but I feel... Because it's a control deck. They're not super likely to be doing, like, much else. And it could deny them a mana. I'm... This may be wrong, but I actually think it's fine. Um, We'll see. We'll have to see. Congrats, you made a blue mana. Good job, opponent. God, such a pet peeve. Such a pet peeve. Why do people bother just floating mana into something that just doesn't matter? Um. Okay, so they know about the planes. Or sorry, they know about the, the song, but they don't know about the pangolin. But they are going to snap counter the pangolin if I give them the chance. So that kind of makes me wonder if I'm supposed to do something else. The problem is the pangolin is nice because it does let me punch through Varal with the Kabu, whereas right now it's getting kind of sandbagged. But like, what are the odds of my opponent not having counterspell here? It just feels like really unlikely that they won't. So I'm just going to do this. Um... And I'm actually probably just going to crack the Mind Stone and stuff. Like, this is just going to be a three mana draw one, which is, like, not the best, but also not the worst. Um... That is, in fact, exactly... Yeah, the Big Bounce has a, a very sweet RGB keyboard, in fact. It's my old keyboard from before. That's like the one I used to use before I upgraded to my uh, uh, to my 60, or not my 60%, but my 10 keyless. Um, like I said, we pretty much Frankenstein together an entire gaming rig for Val between like a little bit like we basically spent like, I, we probably wound up spending about like 500 actual dollars, but then everything else was just like fully Frankenstein. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll try to shut. Wait, oh, oh no, wrong way. Mirrored. Here. There we go. Now we can kind of get... Now you get the best of both worlds. You get beard, and you get keyboard. It's great. Um, uh, uh, they are both mechanical. Um, much to Val's somewhat sad. Ooh, you do love to see that. You do love to see that. That is a good little thing to see milled over. Ooh, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna... Yeah, let's do this. Let's pick them up. One, two, let's go. Um, all right, all right, all right. So what do I get to do here? Oh, I can cast Multani here. That's kind of hot. So the only, like, I actually don't even mind. Yeah, this is actually fine. I'm going to cast Multani here because honestly, if they have a counter spell, like, yeah, sure. Like, I'm a, it's annoying, but like, you got me. Um, could you grab the camera? God damn it, Alex. Yeah, like, if they're going to have a counter spell, I'd rather they counter the thing I can still just buy back. Body Devil? Oh, shit. That's not good. That's not great. Um, okay. That's a bit of an issue. Okay, how do I solve said issue? Um, yeah, I kind of hate that. Loki dying now. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, that's like just shy of being able to do like anything super meaningful. Yeah, so we're just going to play Senor Pangolin here, make a 4-4. Um, no attacks, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Man, Baral is, like, actually pretty brutal. Like, it just, like, every time you see your opponent play that card, it just feels like you're kind of losing. Which is not great. Also, Jesus, them copying my Multani while they're milling themselves lands is actually, like, pretty savage. God, I can't even double block here? That's messed up. That's super messed up. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that. Yeah, we're gonna lose this game for sure. 
PK style beard cam. <laughs> Wait, who's PK? A oh, water knot? Yeah, sure. I actually don't know who PK is. I feel like I should know, but I don't for some reason. Oh, Pleasant Kenobi, of course. Um, sure, 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 sure. Man, I'm literally getting owned by my own Multani, and it feels really bad. Um, like, I low key think I'm just dead here. I don't think I have outs, unfortunately. Because I can't both buy back and cast the Multani, unfortunately. All right, take it easy, Alex. Thanks for stopping by. Loki, if you want to just like keep the stream on in the background, I would like mucho appreciate because those views are good for my uh for my metrics and getting the heuristics up. But you know, do what you gotta do. Um yeah, I'm just gonna concede the game here. Like we literally just can't beat that Multani in a thousand years, unfortunately. Okay, so we're playing against a blue-black control deck, basically, as far as I can tell, with, like, a seemingly self-mill element, which is kind of dope. I sort of like decks like that. Alex, although he's just leaving, will know. Yeah, perfect. I appreciate you, Alex. Thank you for doing that. Bro move. Um... But yeah, one of my one of my favorite DDH decks that plays is a DC self-mill deck, so I'm all about those strats. Bring in my mill card and get them? Wait, what's my mill card? I have a mill card? What? I don't have any. Like, you mean this? I guess this is, like, kind of funny. I don't think I want to do that, though. That seems actively terrible, but it is sort of funny. Um, Ronom Unicorn seems like it could be a thing. I'm just going to run it back and hope that we draw a little bit more hot than we did that time. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, no, we're not, we're not, we're not doing that. I've been known to do some, uh... Yeah, yeah, we've got... The, yeah, no, you're right. We've got the... Didn't say please. God, classic splash the double blue card. Uh, <laughs> we got the didn't say please, and then we've got the other thing. Ooh, this hand is bad. This is a bunch of auras and literally nothing to slap them on. God, the mana's really good, though. But this hand just doesn't do anything, and we'll just die to a brawl. Um... Oh, yeah, this is, like, substantially better. Um... Yeah, I'm going to ship the Ridge Scale Tusker here. Uh, and then we're just going to play Shamblerino on one. Uh, that's not a bad draw. That's not a bad draw. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go... Wait, is this colorless? Okay, good, it is. thought it was like aggressively trying to tap me out of the color I needed to actually activate my Shambler, and I would have been kind of pissed. Uh, land to turn. Uh, let's put a Wolf Willow Haven on this one. Uh, and then I'm just going to pass again. Auto pay. Yeah, maybe I will bring in the Ronom Unicorn. Um, considering all this. Alright. Sadly, I don't get to do anything with that, but that's okay. Alright, this this game is looking a lot better so far. Yeah, Solemn. Can eat my shorts. Ooh, Mr. Gracky boy. I was going to cycle the Endotha Triome, but Grackmaw makes me definitely just pretty happy to play that out. Um, uh, oh yeah, this is hype. Oh yeah, this is very good actually. Okay, so we're going to play the land. And then I'm going to attack with the Kabu. And then I'm going to give it an extra counter. And then I get an extra dude. Now we're kind of popping off. I freaking love animation module. This card is so good. It takes a little bit to get going, but like eventually you just wind up with like this like barrage of stuff. Lock is fine. Oh, 
Prince on four mana here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Module mechanic is, is great. Or module metall metallic mimic, rather, is what I meant to say there. Um, but hopefully everyone understood that. Um, cool. Okay, Dawn Trader off is fine. Um I wonder at what point I just start going wide with the servos. Like if they want to eat a 1-1, then they're like not blocking my Kavu. But this is 9 damage right now and they're at 12. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, let's just ship with all. Yeah, you got it. I'm actually just gonna do this. It means I don't get to play my Grackmaw this turn, but it means they take more damage and I get another thing. Basically just like replaces it, the one that just died and I'll just play the Dawn Trader up instead. That's honestly fine by me, I think. And if they want to counter the Dawn Trader up, like, yeah, you abs you've absolutely got that, friend. Um, All right, Mildred no, Reset a statue, which is a shame, but the other two cards I'm not like super fussed about. My bonus also just like completely dead on board here, so does that. That was a much better game. <laughs> Um, is it because I want it? Perhaps. Um, oh yeah, I literally also have this freaking compelling argument. That's very funny. Um, but definitely not a thing I'm gonna try to board into. I'd actually missed that I had that one. I knew I had the counter spell, but I didn't know I had the other one. No, you got- chat! You didn't let me tell my story, or rather, nobody reminded me to tell my story and I just went right into the match. It's because I got super, we got super sidetracked with the whole talk of like feminism and transphobia and everything, which, fair enough, is a pretty, a pretty good and valid uh, conversation to have, I think. Um, but once again, I will attempt to remember story time after this game is done. Hopefully, that attempt will be successful. Uh, keep to oh yeah, this this hand is actually not bad. It's a little like underwhelming in terms of like what's going on with it, but. Yeah, this is actually not bad, because I can go turn one Scattered Groves, turn two Swamp Mindstone Module. Ooh. That's also kind of tempting to do on turn two. Maybe I do that instead? We'll have to see. We'll have to see. That's also quite tempting. Cute dog confirmed for Kaldheim. Ooh, I might have to take a look at that after the, map, after the other match as well. Alright, so they got the Baral here. Ugh. Turn two Baral is always just like... Super annoying to have to like put up with. God damn it. Um. Alright, so I'm actually gonna go with the Luminarch Fast Sprint here because I'd really rather not get that one countered if I can avoid it. Plus, putting it this turn means I can actually attack into the Brawl next turn. They might just kill it here, of course, but but like I think it's more proactive than what they're doing. Ooh. Sky Goom Shade is actually very cute with what um, with what they're trying to do with the whole like self mill mill everybody thing. Okay, so there's a Multani in my yard, um, and then I milled over Kavu Wings and Status Statue. All right, this is actually going to be like a decent little turn, I think. So we're gonna go. What are we gonna do here? We're gonna go Forest, and I can go Forest into Mindstone, Mindstone into Song of Freya Lise. And then Song of Freilis into Animation Module by tapping the Luminarc Aspirant. Which ends up being like, yeah, quite a good turn for us overall, I think. Alright, two things to do after this match. Look up what this cute dog is, and tell the story of the McGriff nickname. Ah, uh, into the God Eternals? That's kind of rough. Yeah, four, four. Yeah, we might die here. My opponent is definitely doing some good things. Do I just find finality their ass? Do, wait, can I? No, I'm a mana short for that right now, unfortunately. That sucks. Um. So what do I want to do instead? Do I just go Grackmaw? No, I guess I go Lieutenant and then make a 1-1. One -one. Lieutenant, put a counter on itself. And then make a 1-1. One -one. That seems fine. That seems fine. It's not incredible or anything. But it does block pretty dang well. It's got pro random nonsense they might have. Oh, sure. 
If that's all that's happening this turn, I feel pretty good about that. Ooh. Hell yeah, we're doing that. Hell yeah, we're doing that. Now I get to attack here pretty much for free. It's a nice little board if I do say so myself. Folio fancies. Uh oh, that's like a little scary. Just one of Mills cards equal the number of cards in your hand. Uh, jokes on you. There's no cards in my hand. <laughs> um. Ooh. Man. So if they have a counter spell, the fine finality. Like I really want a finality this turn, but if they have a counter spell that's like not great for me, I kind of want to first the Rowan games here. Yeah, let's do let's do this. So let's first the Rowan games. Make a 1-1. One, one. And then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go one, two. Buy back the Multani. I'm actually gonna buy back the scattered groves as well, because I might wind up cycling that now. The Multani goes to my yard, then I can make a land drop for the turn. Go to combat. So this can't block. So they can put a total, yeah, so I can actually attack with the Bosri's Lieutenant for free here. Sure, that's fine. I have 19 cards in my yard. Okay, so everybody draws one. That's fine, I guess. <laughs> so my plan is to cycle Scattered Grows end of turn. Next turn, I'll play a Plains and try to cast Fine Finality, or specifically Finality. So I'll be able to buff a number of my creatures. Like basically the Bowser's Lieutenant will survive and the Grackma will survive if I do that. Damn it, that's annoying. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it is annoying. Maybe I should have brought in that Ronam Unicorn after all. That Water Knot's kind of gotten me decently well multiple times now. Uh-huh. Oh, that's extremely fine. Block that all day. Sure. So let's juice. Let's juice the Grackma. Um. Now I don't think I actually want to cast the Fine Finality this turn. Play the Forest. Play the Swarm Shambler. Do that. Man, yeah, we are like going off with this animation module. It is kind of sweet. And I think I just like yeet everything in here, honestly. Like that just seems extremely fine to me. Because like most of this stuff is going to die in the next turn or two. Um, and I think that that's fine. Yeah, you love to see that. <laughs> oh man, this is so good. We are just popping off right now with this freaking uh, animation module. This is like a sweet. I'm actually really enjoying this deck. The counters deck is super real, goddamn. Alright. Draw two. Um, 
Um, so what's going to happen here? I still just don't really feel any, like, pressure to, like, send out the fine finality here. Like, we're just kind of doing fine on board right now. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's play... How much do I need to do this? I need seven. So let's play a land. Let's cast Hanged Executioner. See what my opponent does about that. All right, they are going to Thought Collapse that, sure. I had a feeling that they were sitting on a counter spell, so I'm pretty okay having done that instead of sending the Multani out. Um, and so now again, I think I can just kind of attack pretty aggressively here. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six. These can are five. These can all get in. Grackmaw can definitely get in. Um, like, this is an attack for 12 right now. Sure, that's fine too. Yeah, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, they're taking a... Yeah, you can't let Gragma through. That's just way too greedy. Um, sure, so they get to eat my 2-2 my two tonight, but I got to eat their Baral and put them down to 6 now. I guess I could have pumped the, uh, the whatchamacallit too, couldn't I? Oh, well. I don't need... I didn't need to do that, because I can also now Swarm Shambler plus pay for it. So we're going to do it. We're going to be doing just fine here. Um, we missed this counters deck just basically popping off, frankly. Uh, so they're targeting Grackma with the Swarm with the Bubble Snare. That's a little unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I even get a random bug uh, out of the deal, so that's kind of fun. Sure. I think I'm just, I think I just win here, right? Like, I don't think my opponent, like, I'm just gonna attack with a bunch of 1 1s. And I don't think my opponent's going to be able to do anything about that. Sure, we can draw a card. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I actually just don't think that that actually matters. Quite honestly. Like, that can't block. So even if they cast it, it's not a blocker. Alright, so let's do this. Uh, pay one. Oh, damn. That's a card. Alright, well... Now I just kind of want to flex on him a little bit. Like, I don't think we need to, but I just kind of want to do this because it's sort of fun. Because this is going to tap them out, too, is the funny part. Yeah, like, if they counter this, now I know I don't have to worry about anything. Wait, can I pay for this? Oh my god, I can pay for this? Amazing. Yes! <laughs> Alright, that was fun. That was fun. I like that deck. Uh, we still got two matches to go. We're not done, but, uh, whew. Yeah. No, this this was great. That was this deck is really synergistic. Like that deck is this deck is fun to play. Like when you really get the wheels ticking, like this is exactly what I love to do. Like all my EDH decks are basically this. It's just like assembling nonsensical Rube Goldberg machines of sweetness. Um okay, so yeah, two orders of business. Doggo in the Discord, you got it. So let's do that first. Um I'm just gonna move to a screen where I can actually uh I'll pull it up in a second, uh so don't uh don't worry too too much. Um, project is an answer to your, um, to your query in, uh, in the discord. Uh, Kinnan is a busted commander, but what you want to be doing with Kinnan is basically just jam it full of mana dorks and then like mana dorks, counter spells and like really expensive creatures because that's, that's just going to win all the games. All right, let's look at this, take a look at this dog. But yeah, no, Kinnan is very good. All right. So fearless pup. Um, so let's go open link. Yes. And then let's bring that over here. Um, God. <laughs> Classic the flavor text is literally just a woo. Um, love it. All right. Uh, okay. Fearless pop. So, yeah, I mean, this, excuse me. This card actually seems fine. 
Like a one minute one one first strike is a decent little aggro creature, and it threatens later to be kind of hard to block. Because a three one first strike attacker is like kind of difficult. Kind of difficult. Discord should definitely do it. Discord should definitely do it. Um, yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Actually, like this card. Yeah, it's it's not exciting or anything, but it's but it's cool. I like it. Um. Yeah, I think this card is going to be better than it looks at first glance. And yes, it is, in fact, very cute. Very, very cute, for sure. Okay, Griffin Lore. McGriff Lore. Um, okay, so, a long, long time ago, um, I had a couple of my buddies over, uh, their brothers, um, and we were playing Super Smash Bros. And I, once upon a time, used to be, like, halfway decent at it, at least by, like, you know, 10-year-old standards. Um... And so I wound up, uh, we were playing uh, like a stock match, uh, you know, sort of like five, five lives each kind of thing, right? And I eventually got, uh, I got one of my friends out and he's very competitive and he got very mad. Um, and really it's as simple as, so back in the day, um, actually, how do I tell, uh, yeah. So basically he more or less just asked his brother who was still in the game and still playing against me to make him a McGriff sandwich, uh, so that he could, um, to make a McGriff sandwich out of me. Um, or a chicken McGriff sandwich specifically. And this is in reference to what I believe is a now defunct McDonald's grilled chicken sandwich. I, I think they still have the sandwich, but it's got a different name now or something. But what back in the day, there used to be a sandwich at McDonald's called the Chicken McGrill. It was actually like pretty decent by McDonald's standards. Um, like actual grilled chicken meat, not like garbage. Um, and really that's all there is to it. And for whatever reason, McGriff just like kind of, I don't know, it struck a resonant note with me. Um, uh, Chicken McGrill. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Again, this is like a throwback. Like, I don't think the McGrill has been in, like, uh, like the name that they've used commercially for it in, like, probably five, six, seven years. Um, and then it wound up sticking because I, 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 I do, like, you know, like I'm, I'm, like, fourth generation Canadian, so, like, my ancestry is whatever. Like, it doesn't really matter at this point. But I do have, like, a reasonable amount of Scottish ancestry. Like, my, um... My dad's side of the family is still, like, pretty keen on their Scottish side, despite the fact that, again, nobody's been Scottish for four gens. Um, and so the... No, that's the thing, is it wasn't the McChicken. The McChicken is the, is the, um, is the, the, the fried one, like, with the batter around it. This was a chicken McGrill. It was a specific sandwich that was not the battered chicken. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, at Anchor's got it. Um... And so, yeah, and so again, but so obviously Mick is like a pretty sort of common Scottish superlative for last names. And so it kind of like tread this bridge of like having this like kind of fun random origin story and also actually alluding to my Scottish ancestry. Um, and so, yeah, that's just like kind of how the name happened. And then I just like wound up using it as my online handle for like a bunch of different things. Um, and it just sort of stuck. <laughs> It sort of stuck, and that then that's that. That is that is how the name McGriff came around. It is it started as a random quip made by my friend who was pissed that I knocked him out of Super Smash Bros. Um, resonated with my Scottish ancestry, and then wound up just being the name that I used pretty much in my online handle for just about everything. Um, although not my Twitter handle. Um, all my gaming affiliated handles basically, and that is that. That was uh that was your story time with Griffin for today. Uh let's get back in the queues, because this deck is freaking sweet. Alright. Ooh, this hand is gaseous. This is actually probably going to be a relatively quick henge, which I kind of love to see. This sounds great. This Dovin avatar is very disturbing. I'm not a fan. Um, all right, definitely going to play this. So the question next turn is, what do I want to do with my mana? Incubation, so they're just looking for a card. I'm pretty okay with that being their turn one. Good card, honestly. Um, oh, what do I teach? Um, sorry, I missed that question. Um, what do I teach? I 
Uh, so full disclosure, I'm actually a uh, still a teacher in training. I'm in my last uh, I'm in my last semester of my of the master's program, uh, the master's of teaching program uh, at the University of Toronto. Um, but my uh, my my area of focus is primary, so basically teaching kindergarten through grade six. Um, and I'm very excited to get to work because, quite frankly, I'm like very ready to be a teacher and not be the student anymore, <laughs> if we're being uh, honest. Um, yeah, we're just going to do this. Uh, ooh, do I want on Sarah's wings? Yeah, I've got a land drop and a mind stone. Let's just top top that. Give myself a 4-3 and a 3-3. Three, three. I'm not going to attack, but like, that's pretty good. So yeah, I'm a primary teacher. I have, don't have a specific specialization, but, but yeah, I do, yeah, I teach. Uh, basically, more or less, you name the grade. Uh, in terms of primary. Um, can I go Mindstone into Mecha? No, I can't, unfortunately. I'm very close to being able to cast the Great Hand, which is pretty sweet. This just got Trample, right? Yep. I don't think I need to on Sarah. I actually can't on Sarah's Wings. I keep saying I don't think I need to. I literally just can't. So I think I'm going to play the Tapped Scattered Groves and then play my own Godzilla. Um... Oh, they're just off it? Alright, I'm in. <laughs> Easy game. Easy game. Um, okay, so was I playing the mirror there, basically? It kind of looked like it. They played a Harpooner and a Godzilla. What do they play lands-wise? No, they were playing Simic, so it's definitely not the mirror or whatever it is. Um, do I want to bring anything in based on what we saw? Kind of no. I didn't see anything that like really stood out to me as being problematic, but... Whatever. Yeah, I, the thing is, yeah, I mean, I got that. And like, honestly, I mean, it's important to listen to that part of you. As long as that part of you isn't the imposter syndrome part of you, because that's very real. God. I'm definitely not gonna like that. The first hand was terrible. We were gonna mulligan that every day. This hand is not amazing, but I'm definitely not uh, gonna mulligan to five with it. Um, like Temple of Plenty on one. Like we're gonna ship a planes and then Temple of Plenty on one into hopefully find a two drop and then a three drop. Um, Crystalline Giant, I think is just fine. Um, it's not an exciting hand, but it is an absolutely playable one. Um, no, I I get that. Like for me, it's a little bit the opposite. Honestly, it's like. Even, like, my school says I'm not done yet. And, like, fair enough. Like, you know, there's always more to learn. Um, ooh, Shambler. Okay, so they are kind of doing countery things, then. Um, I want the Cartouche. It's a removal spell, but it's also, like, not a creature. I don't think I want it. Um, I, I know, like, honestly, I genuinely believe that if you just put me in a classroom right now, I would do a good job. I don't need the remaining three months that I have left or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's just three months. I'll live. Um, but yeah, it's like, I, it's just the, like, I'm also just ready to like make money and not spend money if we're being honest. Um, I think we're going to die. My opponent literally went one drop, two drop, possibly three drop curve out here. And I've done literally the opposite of that. I'm a little surprised my, oh, okay, they have three drop. I was going to say, I'm surprised they serve with Shambler. Oh my God. What a terrible draw. What a terrible draw. Um, like, that would have been so much better last turn. Oh, I actually get to draw a card from this. That's hype. Ooh, that's a good draw. Ooh, and I got Hexproof on it on the first try. You love to see it. You love to see it. They're so good. The the, the John Avon lands, these are the ones from Un... Unstable? These are the ones from Unstable, and they're very, very nice. Uh, they're the ones I play in my Zakama EDH deck, and I'm a big fan. Mm, I mean, I cannot block that, to be fair. Like, that is actually just enormous. Um, so we're going to go land. Oh, uh, God, what do I want to do here? I go land. I can go land. I don't really need the Mind Stone out right now, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go land. Song. I'm going to go Song of Freilis into first the Rowan games this turn. What's up, on? How's it going? Thanks for the follow. <laughs> I appreciate that.
Okay, well, I looked away for like 10 seconds to have a conversation with Val and my opponent's just conceding, so that's cool. Weren't they like aggressively winning on board? Why didn't the opponent concede there? I'm. Look, I'm not going to complain, but I'm very confused. Like, this looked like a very. Like, my hand is literal trash. Like, this was like extremely winnable for my opponent. I mean, maybe they didn't know that. Like, fair enough, but like, what? That was. Look. We take those, we take those, but like, sure. My opponent wants to just throw money into the fire. They are more than welcome. Oh shit, I had a meeting at two. I mean, if they had a meeting at two, I guess that also depends on your time zone, but if they had a meeting at two, what, atta what happened is that my opponent was very far ahead on board, attacked, and then conceded. I can't tell you why that happened, but that is just factually what happened. Um, okay, well, we're actually playing for a trophy this time. Um, and I do think this deck a trophy. I think this deck is legitimately very good. Like, we're about to play against another deck that is presumably also 2-0 in matches, so that's going to be also a very good deck. But this deck is, like, hyper-synergistic, which is, like, presumably what you want to be doing in this format. Alright, alright. Uh, not the best hand in the world, but definitely not the worst one either. Um, what do I want to do here? I don't think it's a mulligan. My opponent goes first, so I also get a draw step. Let's keep this. I think we can we can we can mess around with this. I won't play the scattered groves on one. Ooh, hello. Yeah, I am gonna get the animation module out while I can. Ooh, playing against a red deck. This is actually the first time I played against Oh, so this is an aggro matchup, but they didn't have a one drop or a two drop, so I don't hate that. Uh we're gonna put the wolf follow on the planes, just so I've got to land the taps for green whites. Dan of the Capuchin. I mean, good card. Good card. No argument for me there. Uh, we're just going to make a 4-5 Bosri's Lieutenant. Sadly, we won't get the counter value, but so be it. It does create a bit of a brick wall for my opponent. Um, ooh, Archon is scary. Archon is scary. That's going to be tough. That's going to be a tough one to beat. Uh, so we're just going to go land. First throw in games. Make a token. Uh, I actually will attack here. I'm extremely fine trading Bosri's Lieutenant for the Archon. And if they don't block, it's just free damage. So, yeah. I'm probably... It's a little risky, but I think I'm going to load up on the uh, on the Bosri's Lieutenant next turn with the 3-1-1 counters. Because that's going to ma basically make my Great Henge cost 2. They got, wait, Cleave isn't in this cube? That seems egregiously bad. Like, wouldn't you have, like, like, what are you gonna, like, what? That's really weird. Also, wait, did my opponent mean to mutate and they just didn't? That's unfortunate for them if that's the case. Alright, so Henge for two. Land. And then... I think I just play the Retriever, because I get to draw a card, make another... Yeah, this is ridiculous. We are popping off. I don't think I'm going to just send it for 8 here. Or 7, rather. That seems kind of unfortunate. Because, yeah, like, Skyclave and Embercleave are, like, very good. And Danitha would be a great card for that. Solwarden? Not gonna cut it, I don't think. Also, relevantly, I have two large... Ooh, Sarah's Wings is not bad. That's not bad. That's a little scary. That's a little scary. Okay. Okay. My opponent doing a little better than I thought. Ooh, that's a beautiful draw. Oh, but I don't have black mana. No, that's a lie. I absolutely do. Hey, <laughs> Song of Frey at least is so good. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we got there. So black mana. Status statue, this thing. Get that out of here. Um, Then I get to go Malfist. I get to go Malfist Revolutionary. Uh, 
No, I'm not going to do that, because I don't need to worry about it too, too much. Um... Is it A permanent? For each kind of on target permanent, so I can pump something higher. Let's pump this up by one, then. Because then that means it'll go off next turn, which is, like, pretty hype. Um, and then I get to ha then I get to play Cartouche of Strength on this and have it fight the Archon. We are just going to the freaking moon here, folks. We are just going to the moon right now. Like I'm about to have like the most absurd turn here. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's very funny. I kind of wasn't expecting that many triggers. Um, so the only thing doing this is that I do give my opponent, like, a pretty ludicrous amount of life. Which actually makes the... Paladin kind of terrifying. So I'm actually going to have to decline this, unfortunately. I actually am going to have to decline these triggers. Because as long as the Soul Ward is in play, that's like really quite bad for me. Um, but that being said, that was still a, uh, a very good turn. Uh, you're a move OP. I attack you with my enormous trampling indestructible vigilance team. Song of Frailies, ladies and gentlemen. A very good magic card. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So, what you. Yeah. Um. Sure. Okay. Um. So like this thing is a little bit scary, I guess. But I guess I can just like play like a Multani and like kind of be fine with that. Sure. Like you can gain a life and you think it's bigger again. Uh. Yeah, the one ones are unfortunately kind of actively bad for me, so we're not going to do that. It certainly does not have Double Strike anymore. That is factual. Care of the Nyxborn, you got it. My opponent's deck looks very good as well. Like, it's extremely synergistic. Um, dang, like, this also triggers the, uh, the, the, the Cavalier or whatever. My opponent drafted a nice one, but we drafted a nicer one, I think. Um... Mm-hmm. So if I just ship with everything, I win, right? Like, there's almost no way I don't win. Um... Like, I haven't really done the math here, but I'm assuming we're going to win this game. So I'm not going to attack with the Dawn Treader out yet. I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just turning everything sideways here. Like, show me how I lose opponent. Mm-hmm. I wonder if my opponent forgot. I mean, I guess I'm just trying to soak the most damage possible here. You're going to need to put the Soul Warden. Wow, that is greedy. That is super greedy. This thing also just doesn't have lifelink, right? So I'm just going to put an extra counter on the Mokani here. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't realize that. They didn't realize that. Whew. Animation module. What a freaking card. Um, okay, I'm actually going to bring in the Ronam Unicorn because they showed us a lot of pretty problematic enchantments. So I'm pretty happy to just bring that in. I'm wondering if Nixley's Ram is any good. It, it doesn't do anything, but it does buy me a lot of time. But that just might be not necessary, if we're being honest. Um... 
come about anything else. I do think I like the Ronan a lot. I think I'll cut the Dawn Treader Elk, I think. I just don't really have time to be fussing around with that. Um... Yeah, like, I'm toying with the ram, but I just really don't know what I would cut it for, or what I would cut for it. It doesn't have Defender, which is funny. So, like, if I put a bunch of counters on this, somehow it actually does get to attack. Um, Like, I don't know, maybe maybe the Wolf Willow Haven? But, like, the Man Acceleration is relevant. Hmm. Not really sure. Not really sure, but I kind of feel like I want it, because they're, they're, they're very aggressive, and they're going to be on the play this game. Let's try cutting the Wolf Hole Haven. I think... I think that's going to be okay. I think that's going to be okay. That Soul Warden is bizarrely scary, though. It really does counter my, uh... Whatchamacallit? Um... Uh... Is this a good hand? God, no, it's really not. This hand's kind of terrible. Ugh, do I want a mulligan, though? The sand is too un... Well, I mean, I can technically cast status, but that seems bad. It's, like, two uncastables, a six drop, and a three drop that I don't really want to put in my thing that I might sacrifice. We're going to ship this. We can do better. Yeah, this is better. Um, I'm actually just going to ship the retriever to the bottom here. Like, it seems weird to keep the henge and ship the retriever, but I actually think the henge is going to come in way more clutch than the retriever is in the long run. Module, thank you. Animation module. Ooh, good draw. Good draw, good draw. Prince is fine. They're just going to scry here, I assume. So yeah, Ram kind of brick walls my opponent for a little while. Ooh, also not a bad draw. Kind of love to see that. Ooh, Song of Fraley is actually going to be a nice follow-up to Executioner as well. Potentially. I might actually, might actually run out the Executioner first. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that now. Um, no attacks. Alright, so Responder is a little annoying, but there's not much I can do about that right now, unfortunately. Daxos. Yeah, they're like fully on like the like life gain aggro plan. Ooh, Black Source is nice. May as well run that out. So I go Song of Freelise that gives me five mana. I need four to exile the Responder. We're definitely going to Song here. And I think... Yeah, that looks fine to me. Got Hexproof on the first try again. You love to see it. You do love to see it. Yes. Um, so when you're playing Hades, um, you keep key, you keep keys, nectar. Oh damn, that's kind of annoying. Um, when you play Hades, you uh, after your runs, you keep keys, darkness, nectar, and gems. Those are your permanent, uh, your permanent currencies. Um, and then uh, beyond that. Um, do I want to attack here? No, there's no point. I guess we'll see what I gain first. Ooh, I get the plus one, plus one counter. Um, boss loot. Oh, sure, 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 yeah. And, and, the, and the item that each of the end stage bosses drops. That, that you also get to keep. Um, that is true. Um, now we're still just going to chill here. Paladin, huh? That's gonna become a problem for me. Cause yeah, like they've got a like the Paladin specifically is a card that I'm a little bit scared of right now. Yeah, because this is gonna gain them yet another life. We're gonna have to find an answer to this soon, because the Paladin's gonna get very out of control. Alright, it's gonna gain a couple life for good measure. Okay, creature off the top here. Yes, that's a very good creature to draw off the top here. Um Play the Grackmaw, draw a card, put some counters on things. Animation module is quite nice as well. 
Oh, uh, then let's do that for good measure. So combat. And I get to just ship with the team here. Because it's free. It's such a good game. It's like, I actually just, it is just a 10 out of 10 good game. Like, you have made a good choice in picking that game up. This is really all I can say. Um, like, it is it is easily my game of the year. Uh, like, of last year, that is. Like, by not close. Alright, here are the next born. God, that's gonna grow this palette into, like, such an obnoxiously large size. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, I mean, we might lose to this paladin. This thing is a friggin... Oh my god, can you stop? Yeah, paladin plus one of these enchantress effects is gross. Alright, so it's an 8-8, but it is notably not an 8-8 double striker. I also have a death toucher, so they might not want to ship. Wait. Why? Do they have any way to gain life that I'm missing? Because otherwise this is just a straight trade for my Mechagodzilla. Which I think is entirely okay. Death Touch? They don't have 25 or more life. Yeah, I'm just blocking this. I'm just blocking this. Show me how this is wrong, but I'm definitely blocking. Ooh, Kabu's nice. Kabu's really nice, actually. Um... I think we're just gonna chill here for now. I think they must have thought that the double strike was more often than it was. Because like that just like that attack just didn't make sense otherwise. Sure, so that gets to get in this turn. Wait. Yeah, this doesn't have reach, right? I was like, I almost thought it had reach and that they were like punting there for a second, but no luck. Alright, sure. Also, Jesus Christ, this freaking uh ram has gained me like so much life this game. It's kind of funny. Alright, all the counters. Man, I get to draw three cards off of that? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, auto pay that. Play a land. Play a Mind Stone. Play an Iroan Games. Um. I still don't have attacks awkwardly because this 2 8 is admittedly very large. But we're kind of going off. Yeah, the boast deck, the like a red red boast deck in limited definitely seems like it's like the good thing. Sure. The synergies. All right, I just need to find a way to beat this stupid aerial responder because that thing is going to kill me over time eventually. Ooh. All right, what do I want to make bigger? Probably just the Kavu, because it's already huge. I wonder if they kill it in response. No, they don't have any cards. 9-9? Nine, nine? Hell yeah. Right, land. Revolutionary. Oh, watch this. Watch this. I get to just draw my cards right now. Yeah. Man, Revolutionary is really good with Sagas. Who knew? Oh, yes, this is so good. This is so good. Oh my god. This deck is the best thing I've ever seen. This is so disgusting. This is actually just sickening. 
Watch my opponent just tilt off the face of the planet here. Classic 10-10 flying vigilance indestructible, or like flying vigilance lifelink. Like, okay. Uh, attack. Who, need, who needs Baneslayer Angel, right? This is literally just everything I've ever wanted to do. Also, I'm just at 35 now, and BD. You got it, OP. Fan me down, this has been some spicy games. Probably just gonna draw a card up. Ooh, Black Three Forge is kind of a thing. That's like not nothing. It's way too expensive to equip to anything meaningful. Like they could put another Daxos or Danatha, but that doesn't really accomplish anything, unfortunately, for them. They can't equip it. Yeah, okay, put it on Danatha, you got it. Sure. Nice 8-8. Eight eight. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> unfortunately, somehow. All right, let's just draw a card. <sighs> all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Um, land for turn. Oh, this is disgusting. Yeah, like, I lose a lot of my random 1-1 one, one equity here. They have, how many things do they have with life? Like, this has life, this gains life, this gains life, so they'll actually gain more from me attacking here. No, I, look, this might be BM, but I really kind of just want to demoralize my opponent here. Let's put two counters here. So they can gain all the life they want now, but that's okay. Thank you, gold token. supposed to resist doing that they have one card all right cool pacifism my opponent i regret to inform you this is not going to be good enough <laughs> draw a card get unlock my 10 10 oh my god this deck is filthy this deck is actually just filthy this is beautiful i want to frame this That was a 3-0, baby. That was, you better believe that was a 3-0. That was some nonsense. Yeah, I know, right, at Anchor? I wish I could play more matches with this. That deck was just a piece of art. All right, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna immortalize this particular deck. How could it not have worked out? It literally wiped their entire board, and we got left with, like, a bunch of gigantic idiots. Um, and it got the Dax- like, the main reason I wanted to do it is because it got the Daxos off the board, and that card was, like, really annoying, both as a blocker and as a life gain generator. Whew. Alright, let's claim our prize. Get our 6,000 gems. Ooh, and we got the rare upgrade. You love to see it. Ooh, a Gideon of the Trials. Ooh, my first Gideon of the Trials and a Dreadwanderer. Nice.